There are quite a lot of reasons why more people are having to wait for care than usually. The first reason is because in the peak of the first wave of the pandemic, we had to stop doing a lot of routine care. You might remember, stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. So we stopped doing a lot of, of operations and those we need to catch up on. The second reason why more people are waiting is because when we restarted performing routine surgery, we had to do things differently. We've always done our emergency operations, we've always done our cancer operations, but some of the routine operations had to be put on hold at the peak of the pandemic. When we restarted, we've had to space people out more. We can't have as many people in the waiting room. It takes longer to do the infection prevention and control cleans in between patients. And all those things mean we can't do quite as many procedures at a time as we used to. Another reason why we haven't been able to do as many operations as usual is staff. Over a thousand members of Team QEH have themselves had COVID over the last year. That means that over a thousand staff have needed time off to recover and recuperate to make sure they're not infectious when they come to work. A lot of our staff have needed time off to look after relatives or children when they themselves have been unwell or have been pinged by track and trace and they haven't been able to come into work. The final reason why we've got more people waiting is because we have an increase in the number of people being referred. During the peaks of the pandemic, a lot of people didn't go and see their GPs because they wanted to protect the NHS. And so a lot of people who would have been referred last year weren't referred. Now, it's really important that those people do get referred. And so many, many more are coming forward now. But that means we've got a bit of a bulge, more referrals than usual, and they've all got to be done. So what are we doing about these waiting lists? Well, I have a mantra. I say, fill every list, use every list, and put on an extra list wherever you can. So we are absolutely trying to be as efficient as we can to make sure that as many people as possible have their operations, procedures, scans, and so on. We're also recruiting extra staff wherever we can, but that does take time. Our existing staff, we're offering extra hours and many of them are doing overtime and evenings and weekends, but they can't go on like that forever. Another thing we're doing is working across our system. So across Norfolk and Waveney, the three acute hospitals work incredibly closely together. Many of our consultants in particular work across two sites anyway. So where we need to, we are shifting our staff. And if we really have to, we could even shift our patients to get operations done quicker um, by using one of our other hospital facilities, if need be. We're also trying to work differently. We're trying to learn from the pandemic and learn from our previous experience. So in many ways, we're changing the way we work as well. So if that means being more efficient in theatre, having quicker turnarounds, having perhaps two theatres going at the same time, those sorts of new ways of working can help us be more efficient. But however efficient we are, and however careful we are to maximise the use of our staff and our resources to get through as many operations as we can, so we're prioritising patients, doing the operations in order. Emergencies first, urgent and cancer next, and then the routines in order beyond that. So with so many people waiting on a waiting list, how do we decide who gets their operation first? The first thing we do is vet all of our new referrals. So that means that whenever we receive a referral letter from primary care or a GP, that is um, reviewed by a consultant or specialist to say how urgently this patient needs to be seen in clinic or needs to have their scan. When a specialist sees a patient, they also um, decide how urgently a procedure needs to be done. That's when people are put on the waiting list. Then when we organise all of our operating and our other procedures, we try really hard to do that in order of clinical priority. Emergency life-threatening procedures will always be done first. Urgent treatments and cancer treatments will always be done second. And then everybody else on the waiting list is prioritised according to 
how soon this operation must be done. Is this patient at risk of harm if they have to wait too long? We're desperate to, to offer our procedures and our operations as quickly as we can to everybody, but it's really important that we um, make sure we target that resource and, and, and do the operations on the people who need it most first, and then we will do it in order of how long people have been waiting second. And I'm very sorry that sometimes that means people seem to wait longer than a neighbour or a friend, but please be assured that we organise this on grounds of clinical need and that hospital consultants and specialists are in charge of choosing and allocating that clinical need. We're really sorry that more people than usual are waiting for their procedures and appointments at the hospital. If you're waiting and you are worried, there are a couple of things that you can do. Firstly, if you've been referred to the hospital but you've not met us yet, so you're waiting for your first appointment, please be assured that your consultant has reviewed your referral and has allocated it a priority. They've said how urgently this needs to be done. But if you think your condition has changed since you were first referred to the hospital, then we won't know that. So if you think your condition has deteriorated, please do go and see your GP and they can get in touch with us and we will reassess whether or not your appointment needs to be brought forward. If you've already been seen by the hospital and the specialist has arranged to put you on a waiting list, then please be assured you have been put on that waiting list in order of clinical urgency. But if you think your condition has changed since you saw our specialist, then please get in touch directly with us. So please contact your own consultant secretary. Once your consultant knows that you're worried, we can then make contact and reassess things, perhaps see you again in clinic or phone you up or arrange another scan to see whether or not we need to change your priority and bring that operation forward. Equally, if things have changed and you don't need the operation anymore, or you've had it elsewhere for whatever reason, please get in touch with us as that will help us to make sure that people who still need the operation get it sooner. One last thing, while you're waiting for an operation, do what you can to optimise your own health. So if you're a little overweight, then more physical activity and losing weight will probably help you get over the operation better. Keep going with those physio exercises if you've been given any. If you've got diabetes, make contact with your diabetes team to make sure that your control is as good as it can be. Have you had your blood pressure checked in the last few months? If not, particularly if you're on blood pressure medication, and get it checked. Let's make sure you're as fit as you possibly can be so that when the time comes for your operation it goes as smoothly as possible.